Hi, We're, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Julie Butler and I am um, a specialist in ISD and I support coaching in our school district. So today um, we're gonna be talking about how to get the most out of coaching at your school site. So I wanted just to share to begin with our um, CSD multi-tiered system of support framework. And you could, you'll notice that at the bottom that um, everything that we do is about public practice and coaching support. So all of these pillars that we have support um, are supported by our coaching role. And we have lots of coaches. We're fortunate enough um, in our district that each of, the, each of the schools has um, a coach, at least one coach there. Our high schools, because of the numbers of faculty, have multiple coaches. So you can see here that these are our high school coaches that we have at our various school sites. And then here we also have our middle school coaches. And here we have half of our elementary coaches that you might recognize from seeing in your buildings. Um, the other half of our elementary school coaches, wonderful coaches. And then we do have some specialized coaches that we have our appell coaches that are supporting um, our teachers that are learning how to be teachers that have come from a different pathway. And um, they, they support them um, during while they're going to school to learn how to be a teacher and while they're in the classroom being a teacher as well. So we also have um, some reading coaches for the secondary level and also our online coach, which is Chandra. All right, so here's our agenda for today. What is an instructional coach? Why do you need a coach? Um, we'll talk about the coaching cycle and then ideas for coaching cycles. Okay. So first of all, today, our learning intention is that we're going to learn how to get the most out of instructional coaching so that you can improve your practice and get better student outcomes. Um, the success criteria will be you'll know you're successful when you reach out to your instructional coach for a coaching cycle. So let's get started with what is an instructional coach. So instructional coaches um, in our school district, they work collaboratively with teachers to develop evidence-based practices and teaching and learning skills. Um, they support instructional professional learning communities or IPLCs. They increase the commitment of a culture of public practice and they partner with teachers to analyze and interpret data um, to inform their practice and decision-making in their classroom. So, there are lots of things that coaches do. This is a part of a list from the job description um, of our instructional coaches. Um, and you can find this if you're ever looking to apply for an instructional coach position, you can find this list um, in, on the HR website with um, next to instructional coaches. Um, you can log in and take a peek at those there. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the why of coaching. Um, and this, I wanna share a video with you from Atul Gawande. And he talks about, he happens to be a surgeon and he talks about um, being a, why he needs a coach in his profession. So let's listen to what he has to say. How do professionals get better at what they do? How do they get great? And there are two views about this. One is the traditional view. That is that you go to school, you study, you practice, you learn, you graduate, and then you go out into the world and you make your way on your own. That's how doctors learn. That's how uh, lawyers do, scientists. Now the contrasting view comes out of sports. And they say, you are never done. Everybody needs a coach. The greatest in the world needs a coach. So I tried to think about this as a surgeon. Pay someone to come into my operating room, observe me and critique me. It seems absurd. Expertise means not needing to be coached. So then which view is right? Turns out there are numerous problems 
in making it on your own. You don't recognize the issues that are standing in your way, or if you do, you don't necessarily know how to fix them. And the result is that somewhere along the way, you stop improving. And I thought about that, and I realized that was exactly what had happened to me as a surgeon. So I asked a former professor of mine who had retired, um, his name is Bob Osteen, and he agreed to come to my operating room and observe me. The case, I remember that first case, it went beautifully. I didn't think there would be anything much he'd have to say when we were done. Instead, he had a whole page of dense with notes. <laughs> Just small things, he said. Did you notice that the light had swung out of the wound during the case? Another thing I noticed, he said, your elbow goes up in the air every once in a while. That means you're not in full control. It was a whole nother level of awareness. He was describing what great coaches do. And what they do is they are your external eyes and ears providing a more accurate picture of your reality. They're recognizing the fundamentals. They're breaking your actions down and then helping you build them back up again. After two months of coaching, I felt myself getting better again. And after a year, I saw my complications drop down even further. It was painful. I didn't like being observed. <laughs> and at times I didn't want to have to work on things. I also felt there were periods where I would get worse before I got better. But it made me realize that the coaches were onto something profoundly important. I think it's not just how good you are now, I think it's how good you're gonna be that really matters. All right. How do... One of the things that I love about um, what he says is that he really didn't like to be observed, but he, um, he really saw the value in having somebody else watch him and give him just small suggestions about how he could improve. And I think that that's true across all professions. And that's one of the reasons why um, lots of people, in fact, many CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, they go out and they hire coaches for themselves to help them to be better leaders. Um, all kinds of people, Typically, we see that in the sports world, but in all kinds of professions, um, people hire coaches to help them improve at their craft. So why do we have coaches in Kenyon's district? Well, because coaching improves student outcomes in a target area that is set by a teacher. Coaching also improves the teacher's ability to self-assess based on data and on feedback. And that data and feedback comes from when we come in and observe and um, help you see what you can't see on your own. All right, coaching has a pretty high effect size. So teacher credibility, that trust, competence, dynamism, and immediacy is a 0.9. We know that with effect size, anything above a 0.4 has a, a really strong impact. Micro teaching or a video recording of a lesson with a debrief is a 0.88 effect size. So that could really move the scale. And then of course, teacher clarity, which is a 0.75, really being clear with what our intentions are. Okay, so in our district, um, our coaching, we really coach around these foundational pieces. So we, we have what's called a coaching cycle. And at the center of this coaching cycle are student outcomes. We also talk about all of these other pieces here. So leadership is a piece. Communication and feedback is also a piece of our coaching foundations. Professional learning, ways that we deliver professional learning to all of our staff, to small groups, and maybe even one-on-one. -on -one. Um, of course, our instructional priorities, which also have a, a very high effect size and have been proven, they're evidence-based strategies that helps students master or learn. Um, also, we have system supports in our district. So we make sure that we have master schedules and calendars and, and your coaches are there to support with those systems as well. And then of course, looking at data to help us make better decisions and choices um, of what we're doing to help support the students in our classes learn. 
Okay, so let's talk about what a coaching cycle is. The coaching cycle is a series of interactions between a coach and a teacher with the purpose of increasing student outcomes in an area that's been identified by the teacher. So the teacher gets to choose the area of focus. Coaches and teachers then work together as partners to set a goal. It's either a peer's goal or a SMART goal. And if you don't know what those are, you can just meet with your coach and you can find out more about those. Um, anyway, they are goals and they, you, the teacher sets the goal and they identify and explain high yield teaching practices to meet those goals. And then between the teacher and the coach, they elicit and provide support um, until the goal is met. So that's really what a coaching cycle is. Um, I think it's better explained in this circle because it is cyclical. We call it identify, learn, and improve with student outcomes at the center. And in Kenyon School District, we really focus on the work of Jim Knight and Elena Aguilar. Those are the, um, the two um, experts in the field of coaching that we look to to help us to, that have helped us to create our system of supports for coaches. Um, so let's talk more about this coaching cycle, this identify, learn, and improve. First of all, um, in the identify stage, this is when, this is the stage um, that helps you get a clear picture of reality by reviewing data from observations or from video. So um, this helps you identify your top priority for change. It also can provide a baseline to measure growth of what it is that you're wanting to see happen in your class with your students. It also helps you to see what's going on, what's going well and where there's room for improvement. So oftentimes you'll sit down with your coach and he or she will say, so how are things going? What do you wanna work on? And you might, sit, you might already have data to look at and say, I really need help with this area. Or you might say to your coach, gosh, you know, I'm not sure. It'd be really helpful if you could come and watch and collect some data. Now, I know that you as teachers out there have had um, lots of opportunities to be observed um, over your years of teaching, but these specific observations, like in areas that you want to really focus on, even an IPOP, an informal IPOP, can give you specific data that you want to work on improving so that it will translate to better student outcomes for your teacher. So this is the identify stage. This is where you're going to, to figure out what you want the focus to be for improvement. Next is learn. Now that you've identified um, a goal or an area that you wanna work on, um, then you're gonna learn new strategies and skills um, to help your kids improve. So learning these new strategies and skills might look like professional learning opportunities. That might be a, a PD at your school. That might be a PD at the district level. That might be in your IPLC with your colleagues, or it could be one-on-one -on -one just with you and the coach where you say, I'm really struggling with this area, or I'd like to find some, um, some things to help me with um, this particular content. And your coach might have some suggestions, or you could say, oh, I really saw, I heard that this teacher was doing this and I'd really like to see it. <laughs> so your coach can arrange for that to happen. So um, learning new strategies and skills can look very different and can take all kinds of different forms. So um, once you have an idea of what you wanna learn, then there are different ways to approach that learning as well um, in practice. So that could be modeling. You could go watch somebody else teach that. Your coach could come in and teach it for you and model for you what that strategy or skill looks like. It could be that you opt to co-teach where you and the, and the coach teach together. It could be where you just try out the skill or strategy and the coach teaches you how to use some um, digital applications um, for filming that you could film yourself 
and film your class and you could choose to watch yourself teach or you can just focus the camera on your students to see how engaged they are during your lesson. Um, also, you could just choose to have them come observe, come do a walkthrough, and you could have a checklist of things that you want them to look for. Um, if it's a targeted observation with a specific in a specific area, it could be you're interested in, in opportunities to respond. It could be that you're interested in behavior management in your class. There are all kinds of options for you to choose from when it comes to um, being in the learn stage. So the learn is learning new skills and then practicing those new skills as well. Okay, after the learn stage, we go to improve. So improve, to improve means that teachers and coaches work together to analyze data, um, and generate evidence-based strategies that will lead to better student outcomes, implement the strategies designed to reach a, a target set by the teacher, and also to confirm direction, monitor progress, and plan, plan your next actions based on the data. So when you're in this improved stage, you're implementing what it is that you've decided, uh, what you've learned about, you're practicing it, you're trying it out and you're seeing what kinds of results you get. You're tracking the data and you can see if it's working or not. And your coach can help you do that. Your coach can help you track that data and say, yes, this is working or wow, this is working great for all these kids, but I still have these two that maybe aren't catching on. And what can I do for them? So there's a lot of let's teach let's look at the data, let's adjust our practice, and let's try it again. And once you have gone through this cycle, you might say, oh yes, I met my goal, or I'm not at, quite at my goal yet. If you're not quite there, then you keep trying to figure it out. But if you've met your goal, then you can say, all right, coach, what's next? <laughs> what can I work on next? So um, this identify, learn, and improve stages, um, can really help you, just like Atul Gawande said, help you become so much better at your practice. All right, so here are some different ideas for coaching cycles that you could talk with your coach about. So how do you get the most out of coaching? Well, you might want to just knock on their door or send them an email, um, send them a text or make a phone call and say, I'd really like some help with planning a lesson. I would like to know, you know, the best way to design a lesson that engages all of my students and they'd be happy to plan with you. One of the things that we have in our elementary schools is we have a new curriculum rolling out this next year um, with 95% group core for our foundation block in reading and then also wonders for, um, for literacy um, and comprehension. And so this is a great opportunity for all of you to go out and contact your coach and say, hey, there's this new program and I'm not quite sure how it works. Would you mind planning with me? They would love that. They would love to and probably do a little code teaching with that um, or some modeling, um, just you know, dipping your toe in the pool and seeing how it works and um, making those adjustments and improvements. So model teaching is another way you can go to your coach and say, hey, I've heard about this great strategy. Um, would you mind coming in and modeling that for me? And your coach, I'm sure, would be happy to. And if they don't know that strategy, then you can figure it out together. Or you can go watch somebody else that, that is implementing that um, very well at this time. You can ask your coach to come in and do a lesson observation. They would be happy to do that. Um, and there are lots of different targeted observations that they can offer to you um, to help you with that. They can do a video lesson. So watch your students or watch yourself. And we have lots of different tools out in our schools. We have lots of different ways that you can video yourselves. One of the ways is by using a swivel. Most of our schools have swivels and your coach can help you um, learn how to set that up and how to video yourself and how to watch and reflect on your teaching. Another way is to ask them about instructional priorities for academics 
or for behavior. They can um, help you learn more about those that have really high effect sizes. Um, they can also share with you best practices and different tools for digital teaching and learning. Another thing that they can help you with is looking at the standards deeply, taking a standard and unpacking it and helping you know what it is that kids need to know with regard to that grade level standard or that content standard. Um, another thing that they can help with is assessments. Not only creating assessments, but looking to see um, if this is the best tool or the best assessment to determine mastery of a skill. And then what to do with the information um, once you get that information from, from students. So, and what do assessments look like? You know, checking for understanding, all assessments aren't end of year RISE or Acadians or Aspire testing or the ACT or the SAT. Um, there are a lot of different ways to assess along the way, just to make sure that students are where they need to be and that you as the teacher are conveying that content information to them and that they are able to practice and master that content. Another thing that they can do is help with data analysis. So if you're, you have all this data, that's one of the things in our district um, and across the state and the country, we get a lot of data. And then what do we do with that? Your coach can help you sit down and make sense of what the data is telling you um, and where to go next and how to help your students with what they need help with in order to master those state standards. I'm one of the biggest things that I loved using my coach for um, was problem solving. I have this student or I have this situation or I am trying to teach this content and it's just not going well. Can you come help me problem solve? And they would absolutely love to sit down with you and talk with you about um, ways that they can help you help your students learn. So these are just some ideas. You might come up with some other ideas as well um, as you are in conversations with your coach. All right. So ultimately, um, a coach's job is not about the coach. And this is a quote from another, from a coach um, in an instructional coaching group. Her name is Michelle Harris. And she says, it's not about me. My job is to release the brilliance of others. And that's really what our coaches are there to do. They're there to help you shine. They're there to help you improve. They're there to help you help your students learn. That is their job. Um, so today we've talked about um, how to get the most out of your coaching, pretty much why we need coaches, what a coaching cycle is, um, and different ideas for coaching cycles. So what is something that you've learned today? that you'd like to take back and that you can commit to. And I hope you'll say, I can commit to having a coaching cycle with my coach in my school. So I hope that you take this opportunity and reach out to your instructional coach um, for the opportunity to help you improve. And if you have any questions or are curious about coaching um, or need help with anything, feel free to reach out to me. My name is Julie Butler. And there is my email address, julie.butler at canyonsdistrict.org. Um, thanks for joining me today and feel free to reach out with any questions.